Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be talking about two developer blog posts that were recently made public. The first one is discussing the up and coming British battlecruiser line, a German supercruiser, and then we're also going to take a look at the brand new map French cruisers getting a nerf, the submarines getting a very significant change, and then Arms Race is going to be coming into the random battle queue. But first, let's take a look at the British battle cruisers. So we've got Queen Mary, which is the tier four. It has eight guns on four gun turrets, two in the front, one midship, one in the rear. It has you know, a pretty tall hull, if I do say so myself. The superstructure is significant and has a lot of rigging. Uh, this one apparently entered service right before the outbreak of World War I. It's a fast ship. But it has relatively weak armor, which you would expect, being a British battlecruiser. The tier 5 is the Tiger. And those of you who are very familiar with ship history might notice that the hull is that of the Congo. Well, familiar to that of the Congo. Very similar design. Uh, but this is just a continuation of the tier 4, just with a more traditional layout. It has the same amount of guns, the same gun caliber. It does have some secondaries built into the hull of the ship. Maybe that means there might be good secondary play with this, although it is a tier 5, don't really expect too much from that. We skip over the tier 6, uh, and there is a tier 3 that uh, will be available too. The tier 6 is the Renown class. This is the Repulse, and uh, the Repulse goes onto the hood. If you've seen either of those ships in the game, you know what to expect. At tier 7, we have Rook. Now this one jumps up. From the, two, the twin mounted gun turret to the triple mounted gun turret. It has three of those. Two in the front, one in the rear, and a ginormous superstructure with a long nose. A long 25 millimeter nose. I don't know where exactly the 25 millimeter exists. If it's the whole thing or if it's there's an uh, you know, icebreaker portion of it. But it's going to be very easy to damage, I would say, with just how much armor it happens to be on the outside of this. At tier 9, we skip over the tier 8, because again, they haven't finalized the details on the stats and maybe even the models. At tier 9, we have Duncan. And Duncan, ah, uh, Duncan, Duncan, uh, you've, you've got a ship that only a mother would love. You look absolutely hideous. <laughs> uh, I thought the Yzma was ugly. This takes the cake on ugliness, so... Really long front nose. It has two triple mounted gun turret. And then it has a giant superstructure, command tower. And then it has another gun turret, triple mounted. And then it has a bunch of superstructure on the back half. Probably your secondaries, probably AA stuff. It's all in the butt. Uh, and then I think this might even be like a torpedo launcher somewhere. There must be a torpedo launcher somewhere. It's fixed on these, I think. Similar to Forrest Sherman. I'll know more, obviously, when we actually see it in-game. But man, this is, this is a weird-looking ship. It has 419 millimeters. So, you know, it's, it's nice, but it's not 457 nice. And then at Tier 10, we have St. Vincent, which, again, continues the similar design of the Duncan. It's just a little bit more refined. And instead of 419s, it's 4... 57s. You'll notice that the AA is a little bit more spread evenly around the ship. So probably a little harder to all in HE, knock out every secondary support gun on the ship. Uh, overall though, very, very weird looking. Now the three ships, uh, Indefatigable, Tier 3, Renown, Tier 6, and then Hawk, Tier 8. They, have, they still need to be adjusted and they still have technical details that need to be changed. Now, Wargaming hasn't finalized the game design for these, so there's two distinct gameplay styles that they will be testing in 11.4. The first is a medium to close range brawl. Uh, this will have shorter gun range. It will have torpedoes with high damage, but they will have a small launch window sector, very narrow, which would require you to angle your ship significantly to launch it, ergo for Sherman or something like that. It will have secondary guns with high fire chance, think French, as well as a quick acceleration and maneuverability characteristic. At the same time, though, 
they would have average accuracy and average HE penetration values. So one sixth instead of one fourth, which is the standard battle, uh, British battleship HE penetration. Uh, the deck armor would be the same as British heavy cruisers, so higher to cause ricochet. The available consumables would be engine boost, defensive AA, and repair party. The other gameplay style, and this one is more akin to incomparable, they would be long range specialists with high accuracy, powerful high explosive and armor piercing shells. They will be equipped with engine boost, defensive AA, and a standard repair party. They will, however, have to give up their improved maneuverability and powerful armor. Maybe powerful armor is in quotations because obviously it has 25 millimeters on the nose. Don't know how much power you can have when you have that kind of weakness. But two distinct gameplay styles will be tested. Now, how they intend to accomplish this is with the tier 10. There's going to be the St. Vincent, which will be your traditional medium close range brawler. And then St. Lawrence, which will be a long range, high accurate specialist variant on it. We will have both of these in the 11.4 testing for super testers and CCs. And then at some point after that, we'll hear about the gameplay and they will decide for themselves what gameplay they want to assign these guys. Now, there is a premium tier 7 British battleship, Collingwood. And this is pretty much just a nerfed Nelson. It is the Nelson hull. It's got the Nelson layout. The only thing that's different, instead of nine 406s, it has six 419s, which 419 is not a significant threshold over 406, so you're not going to notice any effectively different gameplay, other than maybe the per shell damage will be slightly higher, but you're shooting three less shells, so there's obviously some trade-offs there. It will have access to high explosive and armor piercing shells with good armor penetration and damage values, as well as a high rate of fire. They go into why they chose to name these guys. Uh, the German supercruiser Klauswitz, which is just a tier 11 Hindenburg. It has 12 to 10 millimeter guns instead of 12 203s. It has quote unquote torpedo launchers designed for long range raiding. Uh, I will show you the stats and I'll let you decide if that's an accurate description for them. Uh, but this is just a similar design to the Hindenburg, just slightly better armor, slightly better hit, hit points, better fire rate of fire, uh, more torpedoes. But again, it won't have those unique super ship mechanics that you can activate as you would with other super ships. I don't know how to feel about this. This is pretty much just an upgrade over the Hindenburg. And if they ever bring these in clan or rank battles, it'll just be de facto better pick overall. Obviously, you'll give up on the economy, but in those modes, doesn't really matter. You're all about winning. So I'm not really certain if this is good for the game, but they're going to do it and I'll be covering it. Now, here are some of the stats that we'll talk about real fast. So St. Vincent, 79,400 life, 25 millimeters, obviously, 9,457. The maximum firing range is 19.5. You can, however, equip the range module, but there is no scouting or spotting aircraft to extend it further. The HE shell penetration, again, 1 6th instead of 1 4th. 63% fire chance. AP shell damage is right where it should be. 30 second reload. Seems pretty slow. 1.5 Sigma. Ugh. That Sigma's horrible. But it does get the battlecruiser dispersion at 212, which is nice. So that might be the saving grace if you were to enhance it with accuracy. You might get into like uh, 189 or 190, which would feel more accurate overall than the Nerf Sigma, in my opinion. We'll have to obviously see this, this close range, brawling British battle cruiser to see if it's actually good. Note the torpedo tubes, two by one, very small torpedoes amount. They do a lot of damage and they have 10 kilometer range, but you only have one per side pretty much. I don't know how much actual damage I'll do. Uh, it has secondary armament that go out to 7.3. Not bad. A defense is actually pretty stout at medium range, so that's nice. The maximum speed is 32 knots. It has a rudder shift of 17 seconds. Surface detectability of 16.3. It comes equipped with damage control party, repair party, engine boost, and defensive AA. 
Now, once again, this is an example of their close to medium range brawling slash secondary slash British battle cruiser design that they are potentially going to assign to the entire line. St. Lawrence is going to be the same ship, but skewed towards long range accuracy. So if I were to guess what the long range accuracy would be, it'll keep this dispersion. The Sigma will go up to like 1.8. Uh, it'll probably have a firing range of like 21, maybe, and it will basically have non-existent secondary armament range. Uh, it will also probably lack in one other aspect. Maybe the torpedoes will basically be removed from the ship. I'm not quite sure, or lower damage or lower range. But it's definitely going to give up for that long range accuracy, and I would really be curious to try out both. Collingwood, once again, as I said, it's basically a Nelson. It's not doing anything crazy, but obviously the Nelson isn't available anymore, and probably because it's a little strong in the right hands. But then they're selling it in an auction, so I don't know why Collingwood exists. It apparently isn't going to be like a British battle cruiser. So it's weird to me that they're making this when they intend to introduce the British battle cruiser line. I don't know. I just work here. I just do what they say. Uh, German supercruiser Klauswitz. Again, same stats as you would expect, just slightly better overall than that of the Hindenburg. Same equipment that you can expect as the Hindenburg. Overall, it's just a better Hindenburg. I'm not really a super fan of that design. Uh, now, the other thing that I wanted to show off is actually a new map, a couple changes, uh, and then we'll be done for the news. So the newest map, Faroe Islands, this was voted on by the player base. Here is the visual preview. We'll be able to test it in 11.5. Looks great. It really does read as the Faroe Islands. They did a great job. Now I have some disappointing news. The French cruisers are getting a nerf. Basically just before they come out in early access in 11.4. They'll be available for your typical grind resource. You can earn enough resources to get the tier 8, and then you can get permanent camouflage for the tier 8, 9, and 10, and also for the premium tier 7. This is what the premium skin will look like for the 8, 9, and 10. I'm sure that the 8 and the 9 will give up a little bit on the, the, uh, the visual flair, but it looks cool. It's got the French flag with an emblem on each of the guns. It's got a nice gold trim with a little red accent, and one thing that I would say, this front piece and maybe this they look like they're slightly different colors i kind of wish that they were all one unified gold but that's just nitpicking uh it might just be the the way that this is shot in this light all, overall though i like the skin appearance the navy blue looks really nice with the white and the uh, gold trim here is the premium tier 7 variant it's a little bit more pedestrian a little bit simpler as you would expect for tier 7 the french Port is getting updated as well. Looks pretty cool. Uh, and then Arms Race is going to be introduced into the Random and Co-op Battle Queue. This will happen in 11.4. And you can expect it on maps such as Northern Waters, Sleeping Giant, Loop, Warrior's Path, Mountain Range, Land of Fire, Islands of Ice, and Hotspot. The matchmaker... Settings will be similar to the existing ones for random and co-op. In addition, Arms Race will be replacing Epicenter, for now, in random and co-op battle queue. So they're just going to be disabling Epicenter while Arms Race is introduced. Uh, and based on the live server feedback, they will decide where Arms Race ultimately ends up. I am a fan of Arms Race. I want it in a random battle queue. Honestly, I would rather have standard battle disabled than epicenter, but we need just more variety. The random battle queue is just so predictable, it needs something to shake it up. So I'm hoping Arms Race can be that. The 17th season of clan battles was teased. It will occur from May 25th to July 11th. It will involve tiers 10 and super ships. You heard that right, super ships. Uh, one team cannot have more than one battleship and two super ships. Aircraft carriers, the Petropavlovsk and Kleber, will be disabled for the clan season. You will not be able to field them. So there will not be any super carriers in clan battles. 
Um, you know, overall, this will be weird and interesting with the super ships. I don't know how the clans will feel. I would be very curious to see just what the meta ultimately ends up being. Would you use a super ship on a battleship? Would you use it on a cruiser? Or would you use it on a DD? I'm not sure. And uh, is it going to be the same super ship? Are you going to just do a mirror of the same super ship because it's so broken? You know, maybe Conde or something else entirely? I'm not sure. They don't know what maps they're going to use for Season 17. It hasn't been determined yet. Uh, and there's going to be some adjustments to the submarine. So, they are disabling the ability for conventional torpedoes to be launched at maximum depth. So, conventional torpedoes, the dumbfire torpedoes, which you should only be using at close range, apparently could be used at maximum depth and they would just automatically rise to the surface. That is going to be disabled. So you will no longer be able to use them while in maximum depth. I didn't even know this is possible. I just went to Periscope and did it. But apparently it could be done, but no longer in 11.4. It's just getting removed. Honestly, I don't know why it was in the game. I think it should have been removed before. But uh, it's just a, it's a tweak to the formula. Uh, they also are going to be disabling the increased depletion rate of submarines dive capacity when they are detected by the enemy. They felt like, honestly, it had a negligible effect and it wasn't really important enough to keep in the game. All of the commander skills and upgrades will be adjusted. Instead of reducing the loss rate of dive capacity, they will just increase the regeneration rate of battery. Uh, they also are changing the way the sonar ping is emitted. Uh, as of right now, there's a line that leads back to the target and it draws at 8 kilometers. Um, they're going to be disabling that, and instead of a line drawn back to the submarine that starts at 8 kilometers, instead what they're going to be doing is they're going to be drawing a sort of a, a loose, smoky, unknown area where the sonar ping originated. Now you'll be able to use this for your airstrike depth charge, or maybe even firing directly if they're on at periscope depth or uh, on the surface. So this is just going to be a way for you to be more accurate with your um, random chance shots to see if you can you know, get some chip damage on a target that you can't see. I like the idea of giving more information to the surface ship like this, but I also like the idea of the sonar ping being drawn for the player to potentially actively dodge. I 100% was doing it in the patch, so it's going to be a little disappointing for me that that's going away. I find it much more enjoyable to play sub versus sub with it included so i'm a little disappointed that they're removing it i hope that uh you know maybe maybe it ends up feeling better or maybe they scrap it if it's a bad idea either way that's what they're presenting there uh the mini map is getting a really cool addition you can now highlight the exact position on the mini map wherever by double clicking Wherever you double click, it will draw a very precise ping on the minimap and the larger over, uh, overworld map that you normally use in an aircraft carrier. This is going to be great for warning people about very precise hiding areas that players might do around islands. Uh, you will also be able to report an object's position by clicking on it if it's drawn in the minimap section or this overwatch section as well. So by double clicking this, it's going to automatically announce focus fire on this target. You know, if you were to use your crosshair cursor and target it itself and press F3 or F5, it would do the same thing. This just gets rid of one step where you have to look around and target him with your cursor and then pressing F3. Love the change. This is great. This is absolutely player requested and it's going to make a big difference. They're also breaking up all the minimap second, uh, settings into circle settings and other settings. The USS Black is getting introduced again. There's going to be some collection that's happening around June and July. Uh, and the bundle, you'll have to earn up to 24,000 tokens. You can purchase that with doubloons at a Wonder Run rate. So, 24,000 doubloons. And uh, you can earn just 2,500 tokens during the course of the Portal campaign. So, this is a very premium campaign. <laughs> So you spend 24,000 doubloons, you get up through the rank getting commanders, patches, flag, permanent camouflage. Then you need to spend another 19,300 doubloons. So 
about 24,000 doubloons, uh, 44,000 doubloons to get access to the black. I don't think the black is worth 44,000 doubloons. Um, especially since immediately following the campaign, so July 2nd, the black will be made available in the armory for coal, which will be way cheaper, and it's going to basically be charred, uh, priced at the same price as Nutrishimi. So, like, just do that. Just wait for it to come out as coal, and you'll get it way cheaper. I, I don't know why they are charging so much for it. Regardless, whatever. Uh, there's going to be another change. They are removing the Leningrad, the Exeter, and the Ishizuchi from the Naval Community tab. And they're going to be replacing it with premium ship containers. They had this before. Players recommended buying ship containers to min-max some of their resources. I'm sure Wargaming is going to protect that. But I like this because it gives you more of a reason to try and unlock community tokens perpetually so that you can then invest them in these premium ship containers. So the premium ship containers are going to be tier 2 to 4, tier 5, and then tier 7. And uh, I really like that. Just gives more reason to be a part of the naval community that you may or may not have joined, the recruitment station thing. Uh, I really like it. I'm going to try and make it like community day where people in my community can join so they can get tokens too. So it's a good change. I like it. Uh, they are adding some commanders, some patches, some flags, all of which look pretty cool. Uh, and then this is the new unique premium skin for the black that will be the reward for spending 24,000 doubloons initially. Obviously, it looks cool, but it's not black. It's not black at all. It's white, black, and red. But I, I like the way it looks. I don't know that I like it enough to try and pick it up for premium, but it's a nice skin. And, you know, visually they do a great job. So that's what is coming down the pipe. Uh, very interest, interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I think that overall the British battle cruisers are going to be something worth investigating. But... I don't know which version we're going to get. So at this point, I'm just in a holding pattern. Uh, but I'm excited for the British Battle Cruisers. I'm excited to try out both variants, and we'll see very quickly which one ends up being more popular with the community. And uh, I know I'll be curious to see how all that shakes down. Uh, I'm very hopeful that the line itself will come out and it'll be well received, just as the German Battle Cruiser line was. They have a lot of cool traits to them, and I, I just hope that it continues with them. So thank you so much. If you enjoyed this preview of the British Battle Cruisers or even the up-and-coming changes they intend to make with the new island uh, map and also a couple other tweaks on the other thing, please leave a like for the video. You can also subscribe to my channel. We try and do video content daily for World of Warships, but I've failed mi miserably with that. Uh, you could also subscribe to my uh, you can also follow my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash where I stream the game. Thank you again, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.